Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Edinburgh Napier University online MBA webinar. My name is Helen Skoropoulos. I'm the admissions manager at Stafford Global. And joining me this evening all the way from the university is Dr. Kiran. Good evening to you, Dr. Kiran. Good evening, Helen. Good to be here. Good, it's nice to see you again and I can see that we actually have quite a few students that have joined us um, as far as field as um, Africa actually and I can see from Saudi Arabia and from the UAE. So welcome this evening and how are we going to conduct uh, the webinar is I'm just briefly going to introduce you to Stafford Global and then I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Kiran who's going to chat about the MBA program. Now towards the end of the presentation presentation, you will have the ability to type out any questions that you'd like to ask me or Dr. Kiran, and we will obviously try our best to answer these for you. Okay, so let's get started. Now, who is Stafford Global? Now, Stafford Global was uh, started in 1993, and we are a resource centre for six UK universities, one of which is Edinburgh Napier University, and we have had quite a strong relationship with Edinburgh Napier University for the past couple of years. And so the mere reason that you're here with us this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. Now, our role here at Stafford is to assist you throughout the entire application process and make sure that you do get that very, very important unconditional offer. Uh, we do offer a variety of programs. So um, if MBA is uh, not the program that best suits you, we do have other programs uh, from Edinburgh Napier University that we can offer you. Well, so I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Kiran, who's actually going to take you through the program and I will join you towards the end of the presentation. Over to you. Thanks, Helen, and welcome, everyone. It's it's nice to see uh, so many people here from all around the world uh, today. And I'm going to uh, talk to you first about uh, the Global Online MBA or the MBA Online. And I'll talk to you about uh, who uh, we are at Edinburgh Napier. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Napier's rankings and we'll talk a little bit um, about Edinburgh itself. And then we'll go into the, uh, the the crucial details when it comes to studying online. So what does studying online with Edinburgh Napier look like? Uh, what does the assessment look like? Very important. And of course, the entry requirements as well. So my name is Dr. Kieran McFadden-Young. I'm the program leader for the Global Online MBA. So I'd be responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the Global Online MBA, liaising with the staff and the faculty on the MBA, as well as talking with the students uh, pretty much every day um, about uh, any issues that they may be having or, or uh, trouble that they may be having, I would be talking to them as well. So let's briefly start uh, by talking about Edinburgh itself. So any of you have, have been able to join us here at Edinburgh, uh, really great city and a really great city to live in. I lived there for uh, about four years. I uh, voted the best UK city for the past three years. Um, it was, and it's home to more FTSE 100, so the top uh, 100 companies in the FTSE index, uh, and more tech startups than any other UK city outside of London. So really, uh, and of course it's the capital of Scotland, really, really well-known um, city within the UK and within Europe, and hopefully you'll get a chance to, to, to come here and, um, uh, and be a, a tourist at, at Edinburgh and all the different tourist spots that we have here. Of course, part of that is the lar we have the largest arts festival in the world, uh, and you may have heard of the Edinburgh Festival. You may have also heard of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which is uh, occurs at the same time as the Arts Festival. Fringe Festival, if anyone likes stand-up comedy, then pretty much from all around the world, stand-up comedians descend upon Edinburgh. And we have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of shows across the month of August. So if you are visiting and you don't want to come for the festival, then maybe just uh, don't don't come in August because uh, it might be hard to find a hotel room. But a really, really great city to, to visit any time of the year. As you can see there, that's Edinburgh Castle covered in snow in the winter. In terms of Edinburgh Napier, well, we have almost 20,000 students uh, with us at Edinburgh Napier from over 130 countries, really international uh, university. 
two thirds of those are studying on campus in Edinburgh itself, on, on campus. But 6,000, uh, hopefully like you, are studying online uh, and sometimes on our campuses um, in other, with our partners in other uh, areas in the world. So we have partner in a couple of partners in Hong Kong, we have a partner uh, or two in Singapore, uh, and we have some campuses uh, or some facilities in Miami and uh, the Bar in Barbados. Uh, so I have a lot of students uh, across uh, different countries. But you can see really international student experience and a lot of different backgrounds, different lived experiences, different perspectives and different workplaces and organizations that can be brought into conversations about the theories and, and, and uh, the, the different uh, examples you'll be talking about in your classes. Uh, of course, I'm going to say Edinburgh Napier is great because I work here, but uh, what are some more objective views of Edinburgh Napier? Well, it's a number one million plus modern university for business management. That's from the Complete University Guide. A top five UK modern university for accounting and finance. Top 10 for uh, marketing in the UK. It's the top ranked Scottish modern university and the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide uh, 2020. We're a top 10 modern university for business as well. We've also been recently nominated for University of the Year at the time Higher Education Awards just, uh, just a couple of days ago. In the 2019 National Student Survey, so that's a survey of all uh, students in, in the UK who, who, uh, who take part, the HRM subject group received 100% student satisfaction. So that's, uh, that's our the subject group of all the lecturers that HRM and organizational behavior. And that ranking or that 100% that student satisfaction then ranked us number one in the UK out of all institutions offering HRM. So something we're really, really proud about. Uh, so you can see across the different disciplines, no matter what kind of discipline you're, you're, you're thinking of, when you're thinking about this MBA, uh, accounting or finance, uh, marketing, business in, in general, HRM, there's always going to be some expertise there and some really, really top ranked scholars, academic, academics and practitioners. We have five QS stars for teaching, so valuing the quality of our teaching here at Edinburgh Napier for employability. That's the value added. So how employable does a degree with Edinburgh Napier make you uh, compared to when you started? And internationalization. So we have, as I said, a really international campus and an international student cohort. We're top 10 in the UK for graduate employability, again, like with the QS stars. We have a HR Excellence in Research Award. And the Business School of the National Student Survey 2019 uh, had 84% student satisfaction. So really high student satisfaction rates uh, of which we're really, really proud. So no matter where you go or what department or what subject group you're going to be studying with, you will have really uh, great expertise and, and a great student experience. The general MBA route, just to move to, uh, to the MBA itself, that's Edinburgh and Edinburgh neighbor, but to move to the MBA itself, uh, we're going to start by talking about the general MBA route and we do that because a lot of the modules that you'll see here are shared with the specialist routes. So specialist routes could be things like uh, an MBA in HRM, an MBA in marketing uh, or with marketing I should say uh, and some of those modules will be different. However, uh, most uh, about four of the modules uh, and, and your research uh, project modules will be the same across all different routes. The only modules that will change are the modules that are uh, shown here in blue. So that's managing innovation uh, and contemporary issues and strategic management. If you are taking the general MBA route, you would study those. However, uh, if you're taking different routes, uh, a different route, you'd have different uh, topics. So before I talk about the modules, let's look at the different specialized routes. So let's say you're taking the MBA uh, in uh, events management. So instead of looking at managing innovation and contemporary issues and strategic management, you will instead study international business event management and international festival and events management. Okay. The same goes if you're, for example, taking the MBA in HRM, you'd look at contemporary HRM and HRM in an international context. Okay. So the overall, the, the MBA, general MBA route gives you a taste of kind of most, uh, if not all, uh, functions within the organization. Uh, and you will get that uh, a, a good taste of all the functions, no matter what specialist route you take. However, with the specialism, you're focusing on, in, on a certain function that you think is going to be important to you in your career or has been important to you in your career so far. So let's talk about the modules. So you'll see here we have, in terms of the structure, we have four core modules. As I said, these four modules are core to all of the different MBA routes. Then you'll have your two option modules or specialist modules depending on what specialism you take. 
And then after you've done all these six modules, and these are general teaching mod modules, after you've done those modules, you'll then take the research skills for manager modules, a manager's module, uh, and then you'll go on to the MBA project. So that's the different, uh, that's all the different credits um, and modules that you'll have on the, the general route and, and the specialist routes uh, as, and on, on the next slide. Uh, but you can see here we have the research skills for manager module and the MBA project is worth 40 credits. So this is a 20 credit module and then the project is worth 40 credits because it's quite a large piece of work that you will undertake by yourself. The exit points, uh, in terms of the exit points, uh, just you will just basically count up the amount of credits you have. Um, we hope that, of course, that you'll stay with us to the end of the MBA degree. That's 180 credits. So that's all these modules plus your research skills manager and your MBA pro uh, project. However, we know that life happens as well. We know that sometimes your caring responsibilities or your work responsibilities will increase uh, and you might have to exit the program a, a little bit earlier than you thought. Well, on that, we have exit points with individual modules. So let's say you took the first two modules here, management and organizational change and leading strategic decision-making, you would get an award for completing those modules. If you have managed to uh, study three different modules, successfully complete them. So let's say you have these two and then marketing and building high performing organization, that will give you uh, three multiplied by 20 credits, 60 credits, and you will then, if you have to exit, you will exit with a postgraduate certificate. If you take the six modules, six modules here, but you don't take your research skills and you don't take your MBA project, then you'll have a postgraduate diploma. And then of course, when you finish those, uh, those last research uh, modules, you'll have an MBA with 180 credits. It's all about counting up the credits that you have. Um, but of course, as I'll say later, there are a lot of supports in place for you, just in case you feel like you might be falling behind or you have some circumstances that you want us to be aware of, please do get in touch with us um, and, and be aware now before you uh, hopefully apply for the program that we do have supports in place as well. Let's look at the modules in just a little bit of depth here. Management and organizational change. This is, um, you know, change is a constant within all organizations. It's a, it's a cliched uh, term, but it's, it, it's true. It's the only constant in organizations is change because uh, no matter what you're doing in an organization, whether you're uh, providing a service, you're making a product, um, you're developing some products, uh, researching, whatever the organization is, you'll constantly be changing. And so the organization will change. And with that change, probably your role will change in some way, your relationships with others. So how as a manager and hopefully a senior manager in the future, how do you manage that change? Okay, because change makes people feel not so good. It makes them feel a bit anxious. It makes them feel maybe a bit overwhelmed. People don't like change. They prefer the status quo. That's a well-known psychological fact. So how do you then manage that, that, that change in terms of the structure of the change, in terms of bringing in new processes and policies, but also managing the human aspect of that as well. So making sure that people feel comfortable with that change. Next module, leading strategic decision-making. And I should say, you can take these in any order. You just have to have these first six modules done before you go on to your research skills for managers and MBA project. But the next on the list here, leading strategic decision making. This is what we call kind of a hybrid module because you're studying both leadership and you're studying strategy because of course they go hand in hand. Strategy, looking at the objectives of the organization, figuring out your new objectives, future goals, and figuring out a roadmap about how to uh, achieve those uh, objectives. Keeping in mind things like threats, uh, opportunities, strengths, weaknesses, that kind of thing, your competitors, what the competitors may do having that strategy in place and then having uh, leadership abilities in order to enact that strategy. So bringing people along with you towards that common goal. Marketing and building high performing organizations, another hybrid module. So we have uh, obviously marketing as part of that, uh, but also building the organization in the first place. So a bit of entrepreneurship and again, a little bit of strategy there as well, mostly entrepreneurship and then obviously aspects of marketing there. Once you've built the organization, how do you market that? Global business economics and finance, very much how it sounds like well, you'll be looking at the financial instruments within the organization and looking at the different ratios, for example, uh, but then also looking at the broader global macroeconomic environment across the globe. 
Then, as I said, for managing, I'll just talk about managing innovation, contemporary issues in strategic management, managing innovation, looking at how we encourage and, uh, and manage and lead innovation within the organization. Again, we think of innovation, we think of product development, we think of Apple, we think of you know these really well-known innovators, but innovation can reach down into the service delivery, it can reach down into um, basic administrative processes that you might not think innovation would touch, but it's all about innovating all parts of the organization. So how do you create those ideas, harness those ideas, uh, and, and get people on board and becoming innovators? Contemporary issues in strategic management is one of these constantly evolving week by week uh, uh, modules where the lecturers, there's usually a couple of lecturers, a team of lecturers on this, um, who will look at very, very contemporary issues. We're talking within the last maybe couple of weeks to month um, about strategic management. So for example, in the last year or two, it's been about obviously the vaccine rollout um, or the vaccine delivery. Um, obviously aspects of the pandemic have, have come into that. So you'll have a bit of that probably still, but we'll also be looking at, uh, again, contemporary and up and coming issues within strategic management, how strategy can uh, be applied to those issues. Once you've done your six modules, as I said, your six teaching modules, you'll go on in to your research skills for manager module. Again, 20 credits. This is a bit different though, because instead of looking at the theories about you know, organizational change or leadership or strategy, you're instead looking at how do you become a, a solid, good researcher? Because we know that uh, you know, not everyone has those research skills. So this is about before you're going into your, you went to your MBA project, how do we ensure that you're capable of, of taking, uh, undertaking a full, uh, large uh, MBA project? So we're going to give you those skills because we don't want you to be panicking or worried about that. So in research skills for managers, you'll look at things like qualitative research. So qualitative research um, is, is different than the usual research we'd look at. We think of research, we think of scientists, we think of statistics, focus groups, things like that. Qualitative research, uh, very much about the quality of the data that you collect, the depth of the data that you collect. So if anyone's ever been interviewed as part of a research project, that was a qualitative approach. Uh, quantitative then, like I said, the statistical aspect of it, looking at quantities, looking at for things like surveys and stuff like that, where you do a statistical analysis of data, the quantitative data that you've collected. You'll also talk about things like ethics. So the ethical aspect of, of certain research projects. So if you think of maybe if anyone knows the Stanford prison experiment, we couldn't actually have the Stanford prison experiment today because it was so unethical. Uh, unethical. Um, so it's talking about things like anonymity, confidentiality, informed consent, data protection, things like that. So really, really fascinating module, but it also is, uh, is really practical and really useful because within the next trimester then, you're going to go into your MBA project. And that's where you'll carry out um, on your own with supervision from one of our staff here with expertise in that area, uh, a project uh, that where you will collect data, analyze that data and provide recommendations and conclusions for the organization, for future researchers, for an industry, whatever it is the topic you might focus on. And on that, you can really, really focus on kind of whatever topic you want, to be honest, whatever really interests you and whatever, uh, whenever I talk to my students who are on the MBA project, uh, those who are assigned to me, they might come to me with a certain topic that they think they should study. So they think, well, I should study leadership and strategy. And then I'll talk to them, and this happened recently, I'll talk to them and they'll say, what are you interested in? And they'll say something, you know, I'm interested in X, Y, and Z. And they'll say, well, why don't you do a project on X, Y, or Z instead, and just bring in some management theory, make it a management project, but focus it on one of your passions, one of your real interests, because you're gonna be looking at this for at least the next trimester, if not the next two trimesters, you want it to be something that you're really passionate about, really care about, really interested in, because that really, really makes a difference when you are scrambling towards the last three or four weeks of the trimester, trying to get everything done. So choose something that you're really interested in. And we have a wide range of expertise here across all the different subject groups in the business school. Um, and if, if, we, if we don't have someone uh, represented, we'll find somebody for you um, and really follow your passion when it comes to the project. And I think that's the most important thing to take away from this. So as you can see, you have your teaching modules first, you do all of those, then you go on to your research skills for managers, you have an entire trimester for that. And then your last trimester or two trimesters, depending on your own, your own thoughts, uh, can be your MBA project, okay? And again, just to show you the specialized modules, very briefly. 
and then we'll go on to talk about the global online programs here at ANU. So ANU have a global online suite of programs really. Um, so we have the MBA suite of which I'm the program leader. We also have, um, as Helen mentioned at the start, we have for example an MSC global online um, and we have other uh, global, nines, uh, global online programs at the bachelor's level. Global online programs are designed at ENU to be 100% online. What does that mean in practice? Well, it means they're asynchronous. So asynchronous learning, uh, well, let me start with synchronous learning. Synchronous learning is where the traditional learning, where you'll have the lecturer or the teacher uh, within the classroom or the virtual classroom at the same time as the students. So it's synchronous time there. Asynchronous learning is where you have uh, the lecturer or teacher updating or tutor updating the, the module materials uh, and then the uh, that could be recordings that could be um, notes that could be lecture slides and then the student accesses that on their own time and at their own pace so it's asynchronous you are not expected to be in a live classroom with a, a lecturer or a tutor at any time um, there are some live academic sessions should you need them, but it's only if you need them, they're not man mandatory to attend. So with that in mind, it's really flexible. All these global online programs are really flexible. You study at a time, a place, and a place that suits your personal and professional demands. We know that you're going to have uh, work demands. We know that you're probably going to have caring responsibilities. Uh, or a lot of you will probably have some caring responsibilities. And we want to design the program to be flexible with that in mind. We have really high quality materials. They're engaging, interactive, and self-directed. And we have a truly international student experience as well. So as I said, with students from all those different countries around the world um, really partaking in these programs and having some really good conversations. I was on a call earlier with our new uh, students from this trimester and we had, uh, we happened to have two students from Jamaica, but one of them was living in, in Miami. Uh, Florida and one student was uh, still living in, in Jamaica and then someone from the Barbados uh, joined us as well. So it was really nice to have those conversations and see those overlaps in, in interest and experience as well. So I think they've made some, some kind of study group together. We have three intakes per year. That's in January, May and September. The next one, of course, is in January. Our September term has just started this week. And then let's talk about assessment. I know people worry about assessment when it comes to programs because, of course, uh, again, this is about the flexibility and about, you know, how do I fit in this assessment with my responsibilities at home or at work? So in terms of the assessment, it follows the real flexible design of the global online programs. You're going to be provided with both formative feedback and summative assessment. In, in uh, teaching and learning terms, formative feedback basically means uh, uh, a feedback that focuses on improvement and focuses on improving you as, as an academic writer, as a student, as a scholar, as someone doing a project, for example. Formative feedback is feedback uh, as constructive criticism. Summative assessment then is the kind of traditional assessment that you think of with your, with your mark or your grade at the end of, of uh, uh, you submit something and it's graded, then you get a mark or a grade at the end. So you'll have that summative, summative assessment, but no matter what mark you get, you'll always have some form of formative feedback. So where did you go really well? Where did you go wrong? And you could use some improvement in. Uh, and our lecturers all are used to giving very highly detailed feedback in that regard. At the end of each, uh, within each module, you have an end of unit progress test. So that's 10 academic units. Um, within each module and we usually say you know we'll do one uh, one and a half units per uh, per week however again it's at your own pace and whatever you you decide yourself uh, but there's 10 academic units within each module at the end of each of those units you'll have an end of unit progress test and that tests your knowledge and understanding of the key concepts within that unit uh, and so all of those unit tests together provide a 10 percent of uh, your final module mark so you'll have 10 end of unit tests and all of those together count as 10% of your final module mark. And you can see then, so it's, it's, it's a, a way of testing yourself. It's a way of keeping up to date, keeping on track with the material, uh, because again, this is a self-directed learning, uh, but it's a way of, of keeping track with the material, but also it's worth 10%. So it's not something that you just, you just try and go on to the next uh, end, of, end of unit test. It does kind of, uh, it is worth actually, it forces you to study and forces you to look at those concepts. Um, it, it provides some accountability in that regard. So that's 10% of the assessment. 
For the other rest of the module assessment, that 90% remaining, you will have an end of module assessment. And so that really depends on what the module is, but it could look like something like, for example, I know with leading strategic decision making, uh, you'll have uh, an essay and a report for management organizational change. You might have some written components as well. Whereas more of the economic and finance modules, you might have more financial analysis or uh, macroeconomic analysis there. So it really depends on what the module material is. But usually for most modules, you'll have an end of module assessment. And that's usually due in week 13. Some of the modules maybe uh, will have, um, we've divided them up, uh, one or two of them we've divided up into two assessments. But for most modules, you'll have end of module assessment due in week 13 of the trimester. So you know that's the date that you have in your head that week I need to be looking at in 13 weeks time or however long a, a, a week's time I have to be uh, looking at my module assessment. That's really the only dates that you have to keep in mind with regards to this program. Again, you're not logging in every day to, to, um, to talk to your lecturer or to attend class. It is really much, uh, very much on your own time, pace and place. Assessments, <coughs> excuse me. Assessments are undertaken online, uh, and they are as described in the approved module descriptors. So, for example, if you don't know which module you want to take, an assessment might come into that decision. You can look at the module descriptors. You just, uh, you can even just Google the module code and uh, Edinburgh Napier, and usually it will come up with the module descriptor. Um, or you can search on on our website as well. As part of the quality assurance process, it's just so you know that we are, uh, you know, we're taking quality very serious, we're taking the marking very seriously. The module leaders all sample a number of the summative assessments and the portfolios to check that the work submitted undertaken is that of the matriculated students. So we use a system that some of you may be familiar with called Turnitin. So that's where you submit your assessment through some software. The software will do an automatic plagiarism check. Uh, and it will give you an or, what's called an originality score uh, and that'll just ensure that you know you are actually you, you've written the work yourself and it's not coming up as um as as a math with something on the internet for example or a past student's paper for example um, and so then if there is a high score then the lecturers will have a look at that just to ensure that no plagiarism has taken place and then if there is any question regarding that authorship uh, we, we can require you to take an, uh, an online Viva or Viva Voce, which is basically an exam by voice Voce, um, where you will be, um, there'll be question and answers basically about the module material. Um, it doesn't very ha happen very often in practice, but it is an option there. But just so you know that we are uh, very much uh, focused on the quality of, of the, the assessments and, and, and the degree, it all adds towards the reputation of Edinburgh Napier and then you as an Edinburgh Napier graduate. So to look at our trimester and module outlines, so let's imagine you're starting hopefully in January, uh, next uh, in January 2023. Uh, your first trimester, as you know, you'll take your first two modules. Um, you can take one module if you wish, if for example, you have some responsibilities at work or caring responsibilities, short-term caring responsibilities, um, and you think, uh, I might not be able to manage the two, uh, two modules this trimester, you can go down to one module if you want. That is always an option for you. You can also, before I go on to the rest of the, the calendar, you can also, at so, with some circumstances, some extenuating circumstances, for example, um, uh, you've, you've had a bereavement or you've had an illness or something like that, you can also suspend your studies as well. So if you feel, you know, I don't want you to be worried that, you know, once you join the program, you have to stick with the program to the bitter end. Um, as I said, there are exit points. We hope that you'd stay with us. There are exit points if you need to, to leave um, uh, prematurely. However, there are also some options like suspension of studies where you can take one, two, three trimesters off more with with um if you have a conversation with me or the program leader at the time um, and there's also things like module extensions assessment extensions as well if for example you fall sick um COVID, for example has been uh, very much um, at the forefront of everyone's mind if you had for example COVID and you needed to take uh, 10 days off of work and study then we could get you uh, an extension of up to 10 days working days for that as well so there's a number of uh, supports in place and uh, and different aspects in place that will make uh, will suit your individual needs, your individual requirements. So uh, don't feel that we are not going to have a conversation with you. We will have a conversation with you about uh, how we can best support you. So let's say you started you start uh, next January. 
uh, you can um, ideally you'd be studying the two modules. That's the quickest way to finish the the, the program. Study two modules. Trimester two, then you'd study the next two modules. Trimester three, the next two 20 credit modules. And then by trimester four, so that would be January of 2024, you would be already onto your research skills for managers. So that's one uh, trimester and you have one module that trimester. And then trimester five, and in some occasions trimester six, you can have a dissertation, you'd have your dissertation project, your MBA project. Again, worth 40 credits, it's worth two modules there. If you think of these two modules as 20 credits, this is worth 40 credits because there's more time and effort going into it than any one module there. As I said, with the MBA project, you'll be studying that, you'll be undertaking that project on your own. However, you will have a supervisor and you'll have some regular, regular meetings throughout the trimester with your supervisor. I know it sounds a bit daunting at first to think about doing an entire research project on your own. You will have supervision, of course, from, from a member of staff here. In terms of the weeks, in terms of the module outline and the trimester outline, week one, you'll get access, uh, let's say week one in January, you'll get access to the module materials on your virtual learning environment. Uh, we use the virtual learning environment called Moodle. Some of you may be familiar with it, very much like Blackboard, if somebody has used Blackboard before. But up there, you'll have all your lecture materials, you'll have your announcements forums, you'll have your discussion forum, where you can discuss uh, the theory or discuss your experience with other students. I'll be sending out announcements and you can also talk to uh, talk to your uh, module leaders and your tutors on there as well. Moodle is kind of where everything happens on, on your online program. There's a messaging system there as well. Uh, you'll have your online induction. So next week I'm going to be giving my online induction for uh, this trimester's uh, students. Um, so we'll do, you'll have your online induction activities in week one and then you'll have your live session in week two. And again, those are not mandatory to attend, it's asynchronous, but if anyone wants to attend at the time, then they're allowed to. Uh, commence studies uh, in week one. Module uh, study will take place from weeks two to 12. And then, as I said, week 13, you'll submit your final uh, assignment for most modules. Um, as I also mentioned, some modules you'll have maybe a week six or week seven, you'll submit part of an assignment. But for most modules, you'll have 13, uh, week 13 will be submission of your final assignment. So that's all you need to know. You can see that's a very regular pattern when it comes to the module outline. It means it's flexible for you because you study at your own pace and place, but it's also predictable for you as well. So you know, you can tell your boss, okay, those two weeks or those three weeks, I need to take. Uh, you know, I can't do that project at that time or I need to maybe take a half of this day because I, I'm going to have an assessment to uh, in that week. And you can do this in very good, uh, very good time to give um, to give people a chance to work with you. In terms of the entry requirements and the fees. So we require an honours degree at 2-2 two, two or above, plus two years relevant work experience, uh, comparable alternative qualifications or professional qualifications and relevant work experience may also be considered. So if you feel that, okay, I don't have an honours degree or I don't have an honours degree at 2.2, I've got a third, for example, um, then have a conversation with us. That's the main thing is just talk to your uh, staff or global personal consultant uh, and they will have a discussion with us if necessary or they'll be able to advise you as well uh, on, on how you can enter the programme. We're very happy to recognise prior learning where applicable. Um, so for example, if you do have a lot of relevant work experience, we can consider that as well, even if you don't have a professional or, or educational qualification. Uh, selection of suitable candidates is at the discretion of the head of the MBA programmes. Uh, in general, we've had students for using all different routes to get onto the programme, uh, and that really contributes to the variety and the richness and the depth of the discussions that happen across the study groups. The alternative to the MBA, if you don't have relevant work experience, for example, if you've just finished your bachelor's degree, is the MSc Business Management that starts in September and January. Uh, similar in terms of the, of, I suppose, the, the scope of the topics, it's just dealt with and approached in a different way. Um, and of course, that would lead to different outcomes then for you as a graduate. If your first language is not in English, then you need to provide evidence demonstrating that you conduct yourself in English. Uh, for example, if you have a previous degree that you conducted in English, that you did in English, or the results of an English language test like IELTS or something like that. If you do have any questions about that, though, please contact your staff or global personal consultant. They'll be delighted to help you. Uh, the application deadline for 
our next program starts. The program starts on the 16th of January, 2023. We're already almost to 2023. The application deadline for that is the 15th of December, 2022. So you do have a couple of months, but uh, it's it's a really popular program. So do do get your applications in on time. And again, just, just to reiterate, have a conversation with us if you're not quite sure, you're not really, if you're hesitating or you're not quite sure about your um, your competency with certain uh, requirements or, or English requirements, for example, have a conversation with us. Fees, of course, uh, I will pass you back over to Helen to talk about, uh, you know, the Stafford Global Personal Consultant um, and, and Helen will be more than happy to help you with that. So I will stick around for some questions and I'll hand it back over to Helen to say if you do have any questions for me or or, or e from the ENU side uh, the ENU global online support team will be really happy to help you there and that's our that's our uh, our email there and we hope that you'll be able to in a couple of years time join everybody here uh, in the center of Edinburgh for your graduation so thank you for listening and I'll pass it back to Helen and take some questions Excellent. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Grin. And I have managed to actually put all these questions together and some very interesting questions that have come through. Okay, so the first one is, um, will AACSB be um, written on my final degree certificate? I am under the understanding that it is in process. Mm -hmm. So the AACSB, we recently got an update, I believe it's uh, next autumn, um, sorry, it's this autumn that we're having uh, visits. So for those of you who aren't aware, the AACSB is an accreditation body um, and the top, I believe it's the top 5% of business schools in, in the world um, are AACSB accredited. So it's a great uh, honor to be accredited by the AACSB. We've recently applied for accreditation. It's a huge, huge process, very long process. Uh, and we do have our, our, our own examiners panels, those who will be examining Edinburgh Napier. Uh, the judges of that will be coming uh, this, uh, this autumn. And I believe next autumn is when the final uh, decision will be made with that. So uh, in terms of your question, um, I don't believe it's gonna be written on your exam, your, your uh, graduation certificate. But uh, if we are successful in that, then uh, you know it'll be very much on the all the the brochures and the materials for Edinburgh Napier. So I feel like uh, future employers will know uh, very well that Napier will be AACSB uh, accredited if we're successful in that application. Excellent, good. Um, and the next interesting question is: uh, Would the modules be changed or upgraded? during my studies and if so how would this affect my progress mm. so uh, the last upgrade that we've had to the modules in terms of the structure of the organization was a, uh, the structure of the of the the degrees was a couple of years ago and we still have some students uh, who maybe have suspended studies who may have started under one structure and are moving on to another structure. In general, there would be called some kind of legacy status where they would be following the old structure and anyone joining after the new structure has been in place will follow the new structure. So generally there will be, um, uh, there'll be very few students affected by that directly. And if there are students affected by that directly, then we would have conversations with them. Uh, in terms of new kind of changes, uh, the, the MBA has been looked at in terms of, um, you know, how can we, how can we improve it. We're all constantly looking at how we can improve it. Um, and if there are any module changes, then you'll be communicated about that um, uh, in good time. However, uh, it's not that you know there'll be a new structure and you'll have to suddenly uh, completely start a new MBA. We will obviously keep those who are on the MBA at the moment in mind when we're designing that transition. So there will be a transition phase there if there are any um, updates to the modules. Excellent. Okay, and then a question here from, um, and sorry if I cannot pronounce your name, I think it's Riccelli. Um, uh, while I'm on the program, can I get a certificate or proof that I'm currently enrolled in that program? Um, yes, yes. The answer is, uh, sorry, um, Karen, can, I'll, I can answer that one because I do deal with the admissions um, department at the university. Um, yes, so if you do start the program, you can contact the student support team at the university and they will be able to give you a letter. It's not a certificate. It's actually just a letter to say that you are a fully enrolled student uh, on the program. Okay, so uh, you can actually request that from, from the university. 
Okay, so and the next question is, I have just joined the MBA in finance. Oh, fantastic. With the help of Stafford Global. Thank you very much. And uh, my question is, will the degree be labeled as online? Does online feature anywhere on that degree certificate? No, so you'll just have your MBA uh, degree certificate. Um, it'll say the, the Masters of, uh, of Business Administration and your name of course, uh, our principal and vice chancellor's name, etc. but online won't be on that certificate. Okay, and uh, being an online student, can I join the graduation inside the university? Very common question. Yeah, so this so this is actually um, in uh, the centre of Edinburgh. This is a place called Usher Hall, which uh, those of you who are Eurovision fans, uh, this actually hosted the Eurovision, I found out not so long ago, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, so the this is in Usher Hall. And of course, yes, we um, do often have requests from the Global Online MBA students to join the graduation. And, and I have met some of them in person. Um, so yes, you are able to come. You just have to talk to the graduations team about attending um, that that graduation. Good and uh, can I stretch my MBA studies to more than the current duration mentioned? Mm -hmm. So if we go back to the duration here so this as I said this is a kind of an example and this is I guess probably the the shortest amount of time you would be able to choose uh, or be able to finish the MBA um, unless you had some credit exemptions or something like that. But if you don't have any credit exemptions, this would be the shortest amount of time because you'll have, um, we usually recommend a maximum of two modules per trimester. We don't actually allow more than that because of the workload um, requirements. Uh, and then once you've done these six modules, you have to take research skills for managers, which lasts for one trimester. Um, and you can't take that with any other, um, uh, with any other module. Then you'll have your dissertation project, which could last longer than one trimester. Some people take two trimesters for that. Um, and as I said, you can also suspend your studies. So for example, trimester one, again, if your workload is perhaps going to be heavy or something like that, you can choose to do one module here. If you have caring responsibilities that have suddenly increased and you feel that it's going to be short term, you could take one module here as well. So instead of doing one, two, three, four, you could do one, and then you can do two in terms of trimester one and two there. So you can stretch out the the, 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 the degree there as well. Uh, usually people would follow this structure. This is kind of our default structure and the one that most people follow uh, just to get that uh, MBA degree within good time. But it is possible. Good. That's the flexibility of the program, is it not? And and that is what makes this, this program so, so sought after, actually, because you have got that flexibility, which is mm. fantastic. Okay, very Absolutely. interesting question next. Uh, do you offer a top-up option? I do have a postgraduate diploma and I would just like to top up and finish my MBA as quickly as possible. So on that we would probably have to look at, we do have top-up degrees but those are at bachelor's level. So for example I'm also the program leader for a top-up uh, bachelor's degree and that's where students who have finished the equivalent of two years of, of a bachelor's level could finish off in, uh, their third year and get a bachelor's degree. Uh, we don't have that at the moment in terms of an, M an MBA top-up. However, there are circumstances where we'd recognize prior learning or we give you credit exemptions. So for example, if you've already studied uh, a leadership and uh, module and uh, a strategy module in, a, in another institution at master's level, then I can look at that and look at those learning outcomes. And if they match the learning outcomes for leading strategic decision making, well then I'll say, well, this candidate doesn't need to study leading strategic decision making again. Therefore, you would be exempt from that module. You have a credit exemption. So if you do have prior learning, then have a conversation with us. I can't give you a really definite answer there because everybody's experience looks different. But uh, again, enter into a conversation with, with uh, Stafford Global and, and ourselves and we'll see what we can do for you on that. We don't have an M, uh, we don't have an MBA top up uh, formal qualification per se, but we do have those different um, opportunities.
Absolutely. I um, mean, if you are going to apply for credit exemptions, very important that you do submit um, some learning outcomes uh, or module descriptions uh, so that Dr. Kiran and his team can actually analyze uh, the, the module so, and see if you can actually get those exemptions. Do have a chat to your academic consultant because they'll be able to guide you uh, for that process as well. Um, right, a next question. I have looked at the MEC program as well at your university and I've noticed that the modules are identical um, how does the MBA and MEC differ then? Hmm. So that's a good question so if you think of the MSc um, MSc is a master's of science MBA master's of business administration and that's where the two different approaches usually come uh, the MBA very much more applied and practical in, in terms of your assessments and how the assessments uh, pan out um, you will have a similar material um, across the two modules. However, the way in which you analyze that material, the way in which you uh, look at the material and utilize that material, like the theories or the concepts, will be different in terms of uh, MSc probably will go down a more academic route. In the MBA, you go down a more practical route in terms of applying it to real life situations, especially those that you've had experience with. The project, uh, project as well, um, the MSc, uh, at times can be more, we always expect some kind of practical element, but the MSc could be more academic and the MBA could be more, uh, MSc could be more academic and theoretical, the M MBA is often more practical oriented, so people doing projects, for example, in their own organizations or trying to solve a project um, or a problem in their own organizations with their project. So it's really more about the uh, approach rather than the materials, it's about the approach that you're expected to take when using those materials. Good. Um, and I'll just answer the next question with regards um, to how many modules you can take. Um, yes, you have been issued with one module this trimester, which is fantastic. That's good. Um, as Dr. Kirana said, um, it's nice to actually just start off with one module, pace your degree, see, look at your time management, see if you can actually manage two modules. Um, then in your next trimester, which will start uh, January of 2023, you can then decide to take up two modules. Now, if you take up two modules uh, following that every trimester and you successfully complete and pass your assignments, yes, you can uh, you know, do your program or finish your program in a shorter period of time. Um, so just bear that in mind. As Dr. Kirana said, if you're going to take two modules, you really need to be honest with yourself in terms of your time management because you have to submit two modules, as, I mean, sorry, two assignments at the same time. Okay. Um, do, do get in touch with me. I think it's uh, Nazratula, right? So Nazratula, do get in touch with me or your academic consultant and we'll be able to also guide you and give you a, a sort of a, a guideline as to when you can finish your um, degree. Okay, good. Um, next question, also a very interesting question. Are your degree certificates issued with classifications such as first class, second class or third class pass? Mm. Good question. Yes, yeah, so we have, uh, we do have in the assessment level some uh, distinctions as well. So um, uh, sometimes we have a, a distinction grade that can be applied. Usually, distinction is uh, over the level of, I believe, it's uh, 65. Um, across all the different uh, all the different grades, I think I'll have to check about whether that's actually shown on the. I think it's only distinction that would be shown on the on the certificate if it was applicable. Um, we wouldn't have any other grades on there. Um, we use a different marking scheme, I guess, than uh, we would commonly associate with with postgraduates, where we have a first class honors, a one one, a two one, a two two, etc. Third class, uh, we use a, a marking scheme that starts with the Ds. So D is good in this regard because it stands for distinction. So a distinction would be uh, the, be this, uh, the, the best type of D grade would be a D5, goes all the way down to D1. And then at the bottom of D1, you'll have your pass grades. So P5 is the best, going down to P1. And then hopefully none of you will see it, but a failing grade then will start with F1. Uh, so we don't have the the common uh, grade distinctions on the uh, or grade differentiations on the grade, on the certificate itself. Good. Okay. Um, and the next question is about uh, assignments. 
Um, I've noticed that this program has assignments, which I really do like. However, would this change at any point into examinations? No, I think there's a short answer there. Uh, I'm, I won't be involved with the design of the MBA in future. However, uh, I would probably bet that they wouldn't bring in examinations. Um, usually the way that pedagogical teaching and learning research is going is that we're trying to move away from examinations. So for example, I recently designed a module and I don't have any exams in it. And really the, the reasons for that is uh, practical and it's it, I think it makes sense in my head anyway is that when you're in an organization when you're in a workplace you're not going to be asked to sit down and to uh, list off all of the leadership theories you're not going to be asked to think about all the different checklists when it comes to change management uh, you're going to have to be asked to analyze and to uh, interpret a situation in real time and that's what we really care about with our learning outcomes so a lot of uh, our, our, our scholars our academics within the school are moving away from exams altogether uh, so I can see them coming back in uh, assessments I think are a much better way to to go because you have the time to think and to reflect and to really analyze the material and to apply it to a practical situation uh, so I, I, I wouldn't say that there would be any exams coming in no excellent good um, and I'll just answer the next question how do I meet the English criteria now there are various ways that you can meet that so please do get in touch with your academic consultant um, we actually do look at each individual student and you know look at your academic background um, so it really is very important that you get in touch with your academic consultant to guide you on that okay next question if I fail my two attempts at an assignment what happens to me do I get kicked off the program hmm. so I'll say so I, I'm glad you see I saw that there are two attempts at an assignment because uh, I was going to mention that so we have uh, your assessment attempt but if for example you fail that first assessment attempt you'll automatically be given a second assessment attempt of course we also have those supports in place like extensions um, and suspension of studies so hopefully it won't come to that However, if you do fail uh, the, uh, the module twice, or the module assessment twice, uh, we'll look at that. And uh, if you have any extenuating circumstances that you think you sh we should have been aware of, so what we call retrospective extenuating circumstances, well, then we'll apply those to, and you might be granted um, in exceptional terms, an exceptional third attempt. That ha sometimes happens. However, with a lot of students, um, there's not many students who would fail both, both uh, attempts, but those who do, a lot of them would uh, would have to re-enroll in the module itself. So you won't be kicked off the program, you would have to re-enroll the module itself and take the module again, rather than, rather than being kicked off the program or anything, anything like that. Good, excellent. And the next question is, um, is the induction or any sessions that you have recorded um, in case I cannot attend them? Yeah, absolutely. So as I said, you know, it's very much, asynchronous so for example next week i will have an induction session and i'll have it with anybody who couldn't come along i've timed it for for two o'clock hopefully to get uh people uh early in the morning uh, on on the the east east of uh, of the uk and late at night uh, or hopefully in the evening for those uh, west, sorry, other way around, west of the UK uh, for the morning and east of the UK for uh, for later on at night. Um, that's a time deliberately at two o'clock just to allow for that. However, we know not everyone's going to be able to come to that because either they're asleep or they have caring or work responsibilities. So I'll be recording that next week. Uh, the live academic sessions, which are held every week, are usually hopefully held, you know, around that same time, one twelve, one two, two three o'clock. Um, but those are also recorded too. Um, we have live ad academic sessions. Those are what we call kind of drop-in sessions, question and answer sessions with an academic because although we know it's it's uh, flexible learning, learning self-directed learning, we know sometimes it's nice to have a chat with an academic or another student about a theory um, or to see it applied in practice or maybe to have something explained to you that you're not quite getting from the literature or from the materials. So we have those live academic sessions every week. They're not compulsory. You don't have to come to them. They are recorded uh, and you can join them if you want. Uh, but as well as that, we have a, a global online uh, support advisors. And these are like uh, personal development tutors 
who will uh, give you some advice on, for example, academic writing, uh, writing assignments, uh, the structure of assignments, the academic tone, uh, using references, things like that, general academic help. We also have, as you see the email there, the Global Online Support Team, they're there for administrative queries. And then you have myself uh, for program queries and the module leaders for any module, uh, module material questions. So no matter what your question is, you will find somebody who'll be able to answer it. And if you'd rather do it face to face, you can come to a live academic session, but generally you can have, uh, you can send an email um, uh, and get the written response or even just set up a Microsoft Teams appointment i have a virtual officer every week that you can come along set up an appointment with me come along and have a chat with me as well okay fantastic good well that was actually a follow-up question one of the questions was um are tutors available via skype for a one-on-one -on -one mm. session but you've mentioned that you have got the teams which is obviously the same thing okay fantastic and then i've just got another two questions here um, does this program help me in securing any job, uh, firstly in the UK or anywhere in the world? That's hmm. Yeah, so re regarding visa requirements and things like that, I'm not I wasn't so sure about that. I could talk to them, this was the employability or the value added that comes from the program. And as you saw in the, in the rankings at the start with our five QS stars in employability, Napier has been shown to be a very much a value adding university so the degree that you get from napier is internationally recognized we're a major player in in education for example in hong kong and in singapore and across across the world um, so you will get that value add onto your degree mba is always going to be valuable to to employers and potential employers as well because they know that you have that mix of experience and that mix of expertise within different organizations and you can start to connect the dots between the different functions of the organizations if you're in a more specialized role, if you're in HRM, for example, or a HR role, you take the HRM uh, expert, uh, uh, specialism, then of course, then you're showing an advanced knowledge of that HRM uh, field there as well. So I would say it's very much, it, it will help you get a job, I would say, um, uh, but uh, in terms of the visa requirements and things like that, probably your staff or global personal consultant would be the, the best person to talk to about that. Good, and I have one last uh, question. I do know that this is an online distance learning program. However, can I visit the campus at any time during my studies? Will I be permitted um, onto the campus? Well, absolutely. I mean, there's nobody, uh, there's no security guards or anything like that, uh, you know, standing at the doors of the campus or anything like that. We, of course, we have security guards, but, uh, you know, you are absolutely welcome to, to come onto the campus and have a look around. Um, as a Napier student, you'd be able to use the library and things like that. Um, you wouldn't be able to join the classes, but you would be able to, of course, uh, come along and say hello and, uh, you know, drop in for a coffee or something like that uh, if you want. And we'd very much welcome you here as, as an Edinburgh Napier student. Uh, the library is there and the library resources uh, are available to, to everyone uh, with a matriculation card, which you will have, an online matriculation card. Um, and it's a nice space to study and to, to um, converse with other students in as well. So absolutely, you'd be welcome and, and please drop in if you're ever in the area. Excellent. Well, I have managed to group all the questions together. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending and for your lovely questions. Um, again, thank you very much, Dr. Kiran, um, for going through this program and answering the questions as well. And I'll just uh, finish off by saying that we do have um, applications that are now open for the January 2023 intake. It does start on the 16th of January course it's a very popular program your application deadline is the 15th of December so it's not very far away so please do ensure that you get in touch with the academic consultant at Stafford so that we can assist you in getting your application in early to university and getting that very important unconditional offer thank you very much everyone for joining me this evening and uh, have a have a wonderful evening and hope to see you all on the program in January Thank you very much, Dr. Kiran. Nice to see you again. Cheerio. Thank you. Good evening.